I started to mispronounce the words. My fault for using uh, <laughs> words that cannot be pronounced. And I also discovered that I didn't stop at the right time and so on. When my book was released, you think now read from it and pacing up and down and practicing I was really amazed and that I can so I uh, frankly I'm terrified. <laughs> No, this is the old book. The old book which you have. Which was released at Crosswords. It's the latest and George has a total of three and books. And uh, one sip ah. at a time was yeah. released at, uh, in 1988, 89 at the first international convention of Goans in Toronto. That was a very nice release. I mean, there were thousands of Goans there. So I, I have brought a collection of things that I, I write. For the first time I am, uh, I, uh, for the first time I have pulled out some poems of mine from the closet. I wouldn't have dared, I have never dared to publish them, they are a little I won't say erotic, <laughs> uh, a little s sensual, uh, which poetry uh, should be, I suppose. So, some poems, and then I discovered, uh, because of this function, that I had, Kushwant Singh had made me write a lot of limericks, which he published in the Illustrated Weekly. So, I've dug up a couple of them. And then I have a, the reading that I want to do is a, a piece on Goa, if I can get through it. And maybe uh, because of, where is uh, this fellow? <laughs> he calls me a humor writer. So if you don't laugh, I don't, I won't. Uh, hold it against you. But I, I, I brought a very short, you know my humorous pieces are a little long and reading is one thing and reading it to people is another thing, especially if you don't have a tea break or something like that. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I brought two small pieces. I think my best pieces are the ones that uh, make you cry. So how, how would you, what would you uh, want me to do? Would you want to talk to me about something or? You talk about your writings, little types of writings and your You know, the first piece that I wrote uh, was for the Indian Air Force. The Indian Air Force has a magazine and I wrote a piece the romance of the Form 600. Well, I was in the logistics and they had some forms that had to be filled in six, seven copies in order to get something. Uh, so that was the first piece that I wrote and I think I owe that writing to a girl who ditched me. <laughs> I don't blame her, we are both quite happy. <laughs> Uh, we were in law college together and she was doing law after doing a BA. There is place Are you with me, Dan? Hi. Dan is gone to sleep. <laughs> so, uh, we were... I was pursuing a career in uh, law and, and uh, people in Karnata College in Darwar convinced me that I was a good speaker in the debates and all that. We had international, I won the national debating intercollegiate, intercollegiate debate. Uh, so 
and she was passing her time being after the BA. And we fell in love and we spent a lot of time at the Asiatic restaurant. The young people can no longer go to it because they have been, it's become a departmental store. And, it's, and one day she said to me, you know, we are three sisters and my mother's putting pressure on me uh, to get married. So we have to get married because I am the older sister and two sisters are waiting. And she has a, she was a lovely girl and I really uh, was in love with her. The first time I think. So she tried her level best. I said, no, I have to become a lawyer. One day she brought an ad, pilot officers, Indian Air Force, 475 rupees salary, with perks, uh, blue uniform with gold stripes. stripes and all that, you know, very attractive. And three guys from my class, yeah, law college, they were going for the interview. So we went, uh, I was the only one selected. And then we had a very persuasive re recruitment officer who said, uh, I said, no, I don't want to go. I don't want a career. He said, you go to Masuri, it's free. You can still refuse to join. A bit louder. And a bit louder. I, louder? Yeah, now they not this. I'm wearing a hearing aid, so it's very loud for me. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, uh, I uh, went to Dehradun, not knowing that I would be selected. You know, four days, psychological test, physical test, got selected. And when I came back, we, you know, the pressure was so much that I went, uh, I joined the Air Force. And when I went for my one year's training to become a pilot officer, this girl got married to a surgeon. <laughs> Good for her, for me, and for surgery. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's how I, in the Air Force, I was totally lost. I'm a very peaceful man. Uh, and I was bored. And, so I discovered there was a magazine and this uh, Sardar boss of mine said, why don't you write? So I started writing. So that's how my writing career started really. One thing led to another. People said that they like my uh, style. Style. <laughs> style. And uh, it only shows how my English language is, is, is deteriorating. <laughs> Uh, I did. Uh, so I started writing and then uh, published a few middles and then there was uh, no stopping me. I wrote a lot and, and in uh, moments of being inspired by some woman or the other, I wrote a lot of poetry. And then Kushman Singh egged me on to write uh, limericks. So these are the three ki kinds of things that I have written. I'd like to read this piece about Goa. Yeah. You know, for me, uh, there is no place like Goa. And, uh, and the piece, unfortunately, <coughs> is called What I Hate Most About Goa. <laughs> Every time I yeah. every time I dash off to Goa, spending a small fortune on ever escalating airfares and ever deteriorating services, my wife goes through a quiet rage. I suspect she once toyed with the idea of employing a detective agency to check whether I had a mistress holed up in Goa. She did not pursue the idea because wives from Goa's familiars of Goa
don't do that sort of thing. They prefer to suffer indignities in silence and offer them to God. The truth is I have a mistress. You must remember the context is I've written quite a few years ago. I am working on an erotic novel about the frustration of making love to a woman with a confused identity. First a Portuguese colony, then a union territory, and finally a whole state. My mistress is Goa, God's miracle on earth. And like with any mistress, I share a love-hate relationship with her that can really be traumatic. Is that all right now, the level of my voice? Mr. Carvalho? Yeah? Can you hear me okay? I write this sitting in bed, my left knee heavily bandaged. I lie immobilized, a victim of a motorcycle accident in Goa. I hate the fact that there is, that there is a conspiracy in Goa to prevent a 65-year-old guys like me from feeling young and too wheeling. A relative turns his car 180 degrees to chase my motorbike at Miramar to check if it's really me on a motorbike. Friends shake their heads sadly as if I am a gone case. In fact, I am really gone before they can admonish me. And to complete the conspiracy, a coconut tree jumps out of its roots to knock me into the paddy fields near Porgori. The next thing I hate about Goa is that five out of the six people who rush to help me out of the fields can't speak or refuse to speak to me in Konkani. My pride in conversing in our mother tongue takes a worse bashing than my damaged knee. I hate Goa when I discover that the only guy who can clean our ancestral well is from Andhra. The only chap who can knock coconuts from the trees at our villa in Vire, in Vere is from Kerala. And the chef in a five-star hotel dishing out Vindalo is a Gomes from Bangladesh. I hate the Goan Catholic obsession of wanting a Catholic chief minister. Goan, what, when what Goans really need is a chief minister and a cabinet, Hindu, Christian, Muslim or atheist, who can deliver Goans from the powerful, greedy, criminal elements who would sell their own souls and the souls of Goa for 30 pieces of silver. I hate the Goan Balkan intellectual who criticizes, refuses to get out of his urine stained pyjamas and get involved, but does not hesitate to cast aspersions on the management and funding of the NGOs that despite their flaws have been symbols of courage, perseverance and self-sacrifice. Much that you would disagree with me, of course. I hate the fact that Goa has hundreds and hundreds of really lovely women who just don't bother to look after themselves. <laughs> few, alas, too few are fashion conscious and take care of their figures, hairstyles or toenails, or do anything about armpit odor that makes traveling in overcrowded buses an all factory uh, nightmare. I hate Goa's arrogance that talks of development and more development when the taps of ordinary Goans have run dry. When the refrigerator breathing like a patient in intensive cardiac care gives up the ghost for 18 out of 24 hours each day and it is easier to climb the Porvoli hill and send smoke signals to your girlfriend at Altino in Panjim than to make a telephone call. 
I hate the absence of good solid vegetables served with your rice and curry. And the astonishing fact that Goan Catholics seldom eat yogurt. And what makes me almost violent, violent, is walking into a nice Goan restaurant with table covers and red and white checks and a real Goan menu to be told that, don't, that they don't serve Goan Urak. I hate Goa's ability to wallow in mediocrity and certify that it is excellent. Goans go gaga over mediocre pop groups, shoddy theater, theatrical productions and literary works that have to be published by the authors themselves. You cannot get a decent piece of Xeroxing done at the appointed time. <coughs> nor a sliding window that slides, nor a plumbing system installed that does not require the plumber to become a permanent resident as your house. I hate to hang around waiting for the Goan three-hour afternoon siesta curfew to be over, and Goa's total, almost criminal disrespect for punctuality. I am invited as chief guest to a function and arrive in time only to find myself helping in arranging of the chairs. <laughs> Goa has a facile genius to be insular, self-righteous and sanctimonious. I'm getting the words correctly, huh? <laughs> I'm not so terrified any longer. Goa has a... Goa after years of criticizing the quality of Indian politics, Goa has in record time developed a political culture, culture that is sick and rotten to the core. Probably years of practicing in cutting pork into really small pieces for mouth-watering delicacies like kabidel and sorpatel makes the Goan expertise in personalizing, personalizing differences of opinion leading to the fine art of cutting people to pieces <laughs> in a manner that the bleeding will last beyond the grave. When my brother Lenny was in charge of the Taj Aguada, a relative of ours wanted him to employ their cockeyed uh, <laughs> daughter who had a face as if it had been run over by a bus in the front office of the Taj. When he declined to oblige, word was quietly and quickly passed around that Lenny was actually only a bellboy in the hotel and was trying to pass off as its general manager. Most hateful of all, is that Goa does not love me. Most hateful of all is that Goa does not love me even as half as much as I love her. So be it. Mistresses can be predictably, predictably unfaithful. Not too bad. I thought I would not be able to go through this.